What's going on guys? Chad back with you on the RC Miles and More channel. And were you sparked today? I was kind of sparked. I was kind of let down. Let's just talk about the spark real quick. Am I going to be getting one? Maybe, maybe not. There's awesome technology in there, that is for sure. I was kind of disappointed with the price point. You know, I think 700 bucks for that Fly More package with the remote and everything so I can use the goggles um you know i think that's a little steep um it's certainly technologically capable flight capable though you know we've got you know about probably a 10 to 12 minute flight time since it's so small and it's going to be have to be fighting the wind you know the camera the video everything looks great you know 1080p is fine for me if for that kind of a style of drone um, but, you know, like I said, a little disappointed in the, the price point. More interestingly, though, we learned a lot about DJI and, I think, personally, the Mavic 2. Let's start with DJI. First of all, they're totally following the Apple concepts. We've realized that now with the leaks of the Mavic and now the leaks of the Spark, so... Pretty much any leaks that we see, we can pretty and we can assume that uh, it's going to be coming as far as what the drone is. Now, what it does, we'll probably have to wait until launch day and wait for all of these a million YouTubers that get prototypes sent to them and everything uh, to see how the actual capabilities are of it. So, but that's fine. Interestingly enough, watched Casey Neistat's video that he did with uh, uh, Marquise, the tech guy, which is really awesome channel. Uh, it's interesting to see him talk about having to leave New York City to fly a drone because he's under FAA regulations. So I guess everybody that uh, hated on him and stuff for flying his drones and crashing Mavics and flying irresponsibly a lot of the time, uh, who knows, maybe, you know, would they make an example out of him? You know, CNN guy now and successful YouTuber and DJI guy, you got to think that he's got a lot of people in his court to help get him out of some kind of trouble. Maybe it was just a stunt to drive a Ferrari since he took the Ferrari to get out of the city because his boosted board conveniently ran out of power. So, let's talk about where DJI is going and possibly stuff that we're going to see in Mavic number two. Uh, first of all, uh, iPhoneo's uh, review, he did a shot mode called the Helix shot mode that's built into the Spark where, you know, it kind of goes away and comes back in a, like a half orbit and keeps the, the gimbal focused on you all automatically that was an awesome shot that's the kind of stuff that gets me really excited hand takeoff and hand landing and stuff like that that's kind of cool that whole front sensor you know that would basically fit like right there um, for the expanded hand gesture modes and using the force to make it fly and everything I mean that's stuff you gotta figure that's definitely gonna fall into a Mavic uh, Pro 2 DJI being able to put that kind of technology into that small of a platform definitely can show us that the Mavic could get a little bit lighter and a little bit smaller and incorporate even more technology, which we know that's just kind of how electronics evolve and everything like that. Um, but really, you know, the Mavic flies so good now, I really don't think I would want it to be any smaller. Um, a little bit lighter so maybe we could get over that 30 minute <clears throat> battery mark which I guarantee is what they're shooting for you know they're definitely sh gonna be shooting for a 30 minute flight time guaranteed out of the box with Mavic 2 it just has to happen so so you're looking at better flight time cooler automate automated shots um, more complex automated shots the gesture mode which you know is kind of in beta on the Mavic and expanding that to the next level 
still trying to get clarification on what's up with their transmission uh, signal that they're putting into the spark because you know they're talking about the range being limited to it's either 1.2 miles or or two miles or two kilometers I can't remember for sure but I don't know why OcuSync wouldn't be in there um, you know, I looked at the frequency range and it's all in that 2.4 range that they're using for control and video downlink with the goggles so um, maybe some kind of hybrid OcuSync so now basically they're kind of toying around with three or four different uh, transmission technologies from the Spark, the Mavic, the Phantom 4 Pro and the commercial grade stuff I think uses something that's more powerful than the OcuSync. It might be like OcuSync re and with redundancy, I believe. So anyway, it's pretty exciting. I love the you know the hobby and the space and the technology. Um, you know, I would have been all in with the remote and everything for 500 bucks. But for $700, I just don't really see much use for it for myself um, or for the channel or just to fly, period. I would have liked to have seen more of a racer type of mode, like an Addy, modified Addy mode, something similar to Fixed Wing. So we could have maybe got a little bit more uh, faster and fun flight out of it with our goggles. So I was kind of hoping for something like that just to to get a little bit more out of these things but I guess we'll just have to wait and see so anyway guys thanks a lot and uh, subscribe to the channel and all that stuff and we'll talk to you later